A cold frame kit is like a miniature greenhouse and they're super easy to put together. They're also very easy to modify to make them even better. We'll show you how we did ours with love for a country house. Right out of the box, we polished our panels with a dry cloth. Then we caulked every seam inside and out to keep webs and mold from forming in those channels. Smooth the caulk with a wet finger right into those cracks. Here we're putting together the box, which was very easy to do, but it was also easy to get the pieces upside down. See the small hole on the bottom panel? We finally got that where it belongs at the top. And the cold frame went together very quickly, even though we had to redo it a couple of times. The base is made by pieces of 1x8s nailed together. We used a recycled box so it didn't fit perfectly, but with trim pieces added to the front and sides, shown here in pink, this braced the box in place without having to nail it. Wind is your worst enemy when it comes to these lightweight plant houses. Make sure yours is secure because they'll blow away in the first high wind and also it's a good idea not to let snow accumulate on top. But anyway, getting back to earth. We put a base of sand under our cold frame and this is to discourage slugs and any kind of mold that might stain the patio. We cut recycled styrofoam into pieces to insulate the four sides and the bottom. Nothing formal here, they're just fitted into place without any nails. To finish the box, we blended together green and brown paint with Bear's waterproofing wood finish. You can blend that into the paint and you can also put it on top of the paint. And this box will now look great for a long time. This is a square of recycled plastic cut from a air mattress with a flat tire attached with black tacks. Now the inside of the box is so easy to clean and the black color helps retain heat at night. Now we've got a bottom that will hold water keep warmth and not let the insects in. The wing nuts on the side can be tightened or loosened depending on where you want the lid, but the main thing you have to do is protect the top of the lid from cats. We did this by cutting a piece of wire fencing to fit across the top so that we could bend it a little bit to stay on top. Again, nothing formal, but it will keep the cats off and it can also hold a blanket in place on those really cold nights. We bend it to fit it fits very securely. And then we're gonna cut this blanket to fit a little bit better. And then on cold nights, we'll put this on first, then we'll put on a tarp, and then we'll fit this wire fencing on top. This will keep our cats from parking on top, crashing through the panel and wrecking the plants below. So our box is facing south, and with the lid down, it's gonna be about 10 degrees warmer in here. So we prop it up to make sure it doesn't get too hot. So we're already growing red kale, pea sprouts, broccoli rab, red cabbage, dianthus where you can just eat the petals, red lettuce, spinach, and broccoli. But in the spring we can start growing things like melons in here that need a little extra heat in the summer. We're thinning the plants by cutting them at the base and most of them will re-sprout two or three times. You'll want to cut peas when they're pretty short, also sunflowers when they're short because they start to get hairy and tough pretty quickly. But these were fantastic, minced into very small pieces and added to just about everything. You'll find lots of ways to use these cuttings. In spring, these hardy plants can go in the ground, and then the plants started in the house can get used to being outside in this mini greenhouse. If you love gardening and DIY projects, check out our other videos and our archives at steffymccarthy.com. We've got freebies and more love for a country house. Click the sun logo to subscribe. See you later.